Hello, this is our first tutorial in the use of Extend Sim software to do some discrete event simulation of healthcare systems. What we're going to go through here today is really an introduction. Uh, we're going to set up a very basic MM1 queue, which is a single server queue. We will have items, you can think of them as uh, patients walking into a system. We'll have a queue, which you can think of as a waiting room or just a waiting line. We'll have a server, which may be a nurse or a doctor or a technician or what have you. And we will have those jobs or patients or customers or whatever you'd like to call them exiting the system. We will also talk a little bit about gathering information and some other basics on how discrete event simulation works. So with that as our background, we can uh, go ahead and get started. What I've done here is I've opened up the ExtendSim program. This is ExtendSim version 8. That is mildly significant in the sense that you can use earlier versions of ExtendSim which are floating around. You can probably find them free. Uh, if you use version 7, it'll work just as well. If you use version 6, it'll work pretty much as well. There are a few extra bells and whistles in version 8, but they're not particularly important to us. The basic structure of a discrete event simulation is that in effect what's going to be done for you in the background is you're going to be writing a code uh, to run the simulation and each block that we're going to add to our little pictorial image of the simulation is really just a subroutine uh, which adds additional capabilities and techniques to what's going on uh, in the background. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you don't actually have to know anything about uh, Fortran or, or uh, syntax of code or any of those things. You can think in a pretty much uh, graphic or graphical sort of nature and that tends to work out a lot better for most folks and for what we're going to be doing this is more than sufficient. So let us begin. I've just opened up the ExtendSim program. In many of your installations when you open it up you get a menu of programs that are sort of uh, preloaded as examples. I've closed that to sort of start from a blank slate here. So let's get directly into ExtendSim itself. The first thing we need to do to create a simulation is we're going to need to open up what is essentially a library of those subroutines. And to do that, uh, most things in ExtendSim are pretty literal, so it's uh, generally easy to, relatively easy to find things if you get lost, uh, but there are always little uh, wrinkles. So we will begin on the library menu and we want to open a library and you'll have a collection of library files what we're going to use the vast majority of the time is called the item library and the item library uh, opens up a collection of subroutines which are specifically written to do discrete event simulation where items go from place to place or block to block. Uh, the movement of an item from one block to the next is a discrete event. That's sort of why it's called discrete event simulation. So we have opened that library. I want to open a, the window to that library which will pop up here automatically on the right hand side and this is just a listing of the blocks or if you prefer to think of it the subroutines that are contained within that library so in order to cover some basic items here we are going to make what is in some sense the simplest kind of simulation that's worth looking at which is the basic mm one q uh, as you recall that means the time between the arrival of jobs is going to be exponentially distributed the service times are going to be exponentially distributed. There's going to be a queue, meaning there's a waiting line for jobs that can't get to the server immediately. And that is the simplest kind of system that we may have some interest in. So let's go ahead and create that. In order to get started in discrete event simulation with this software, we're going to need what ExtendSim calls the executive block. The executive block is, for all practical purposes, the main code of the simulation itself and actually I've made a mistake here. I need to open a new model
and within that new model I can stick in my executive block now. Okay, so now we have uh, the bare bones starting point of a discrete event simulation model. What the executive block does is it functions as the main sort of control unit for the simulation. All this really is is a database manager. Discrete event simulations function by having these blocks create random numbers which in the vast majority of cases correspond to times. So the time it takes to do a step, the time it takes to go from one step to the next and so on. The executive block is basically a database manager that keeps track of all of those times for you. So you don't have to worry about them. The reason that this works so much better than doing these kinds of things in a spreadsheet is that spreadsheets are set up to calculate from left to right and top to bottom. So if I want to insert something into the database, if I want to insert something into the spreadsheet, you have to recalculate the entire spreadsheet uh, to account for that. The way discrete event simulation works, this database manager, which which is this executive block, is really just keeping track of the sequence of numbers. So if you want to add something to the sequence, you want to stick something in the middle, it's sort of no big deal. It doesn't have to recalculate everything. It just adds a row to the database and moves on. So on each of these blocks we're going to add, I want to highlight a few things. Again, this is just an introduction. Uh, if you've read the background material, some of this is going to be redundant to you, but for sake of completeness, uh, we'll step through a few things here. So on the executive block, I've double-clicked on it to open up the menu that goes along with it. And the first thing we notice here is under Select Options, we see Stop Simulation, and it reads At End Time. There are two basic options here. You can either stop the simulation at some point in time. For example, if you're simulating a four-hour clinic, I may want to stop it after four hours. If I'm simulating a 24-hour day, I may want to stop it after 24 hours and so on. Uh, the other option is to stop the simulation when the count connector value reaches some point. What the heck's a count connector and what's a value? Well, a value is pretty straightforward. In this case, is going to be, we're going to use the number of customers that go through the system uh, as what we're counting. So I'm going to click on count connector value here. And if you look back at the executive block now, you'll notice a little connector has been added to it. And the name of the connector is count. And so what we're going to do is we're going to count the jobs as they leave the system. And we're going to connect that counter to this count connector. And when that counter reaches a specific point, then the simulation will stop. So we're going to keep this pretty small for sake of illustration. So instead of 100, I'm going to change that to about 15. So we're going to simulate a system that functions and goes through 15 jobs. I will then click, oh, before I click OK, let me do a couple of other things. Down here in the lower left corner, you have an empty box where you can put uh, a name of things. This is just your own label for your, to make things look pretty or to help you keep track of what's going on. So let's, let's call this uh, exactly what it is, uh, executive. The other th item on the lower left corner I want to note is called help, and that is pretty much literally what it sounds like. That's the help file that goes along with this block. Uh, these can get pretty lengthy. You'll notice within the block we have a collection of tabs, control tab, attributes, item contents, and so on. And within the help block you'll see uh, some information about what goes on within each of those tabs. So information about the control tab, information about the attributes tab, and so on. So that's just for your future reference. We won't worry about that too much right now. The other thing I do want to mention about the executive block, in addition to keeping track of all of the times at which items move from one space to another, it also keeps track of something called attributes. An attribute is, uh, well, the cleanest way to think of it is we're going to create these items, and an item is just a, uh, a record in my database, and within that record I can assign attributes to that item. An attribute might be a, a number, uh, for example, a processing time, a customer number, a patient number, something like that. It can be a label, red, blue, uh, Mr. Jones what have you. And so the executive block manages the time sequences. It also manages these attributes. Uh, we're going to use that a little bit later, uh, but for the time being, uh, let's close this and move on.
Now, we have our executive block to keep track of what's going on. The next thing we need to do is to create our customers. Again, extend sim is 